Beautiful. Breakfast in Florence. Good to be here. Jasmine, how was the night? Dave Paul, how was the night? Hey? Good? Stay home. Raymond, did you sleep well? Sonu, you slept well? Yes. Ulella, did we sleep well? <laughs> just, uh, just good. good. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! It's just the red hair. Check out the ears. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Clean it. 
Trust in the traditional costumes of 500 years ago, and they come down here and they play this game. It's incredibly violent. Um, so that's a good time to be here in the future if you ever come. Santa Croce is the real kind of church of the Florentine people. It's the local church. Right? So, for example, when Michelangelo died in Rome, he was put his body was brought back to Florence, and he was given a form of state funeral. He's buried inside this church. Other famous Italians who are buried in there include Galileo. He's also buried in there. All right, so it's a beautiful church. It contains very famous frescoes by the artist Giotto. Anyone heard of him? So they're really great to look at. This used to be part of the EM tour, but we've taken them off the tour. So, um, but what I'm going to do now is this thing works. Take a photograph of all of you in front of it. No, Sweet. I don't know. Okay, I can't get to the stuff. In a couple of seconds, so please take a photo of the After we've finished the guided tour, part of the EF program in Florence is to visit this leatherworks where they show you how leather is made and then you can choose to buy some stuff and as EF students you get a discount here. And they, they give me free stuff if you buy lots, so <laughs> that's the deal. Perks. But more importantly though, um, Whilst this is a good centre of orientation for you, because inside here are people who know the EF program inside out. So if you get lost or anything, if there's any problem, you can come here and ask for help, and these guys will help you. All right? They'll know exactly who you are. You say you're with Simon. They'll know how to call me, whatever. All right? This is where you come to. Okay? If any of you get lost, easy. There's bathrooms in here as well. So after you've done the guided tour, we'll be here. Uh, before we walk back to the bus to check into the hotel. <coughs> From a historical point of view, this type of shop is very important. These ground floor studios were where the artists all worked in Florence. All right? You have these great streets full of these just single floor studios, all right? stretching sometimes a whole block. This type of small square here, Anyway, this type of small square here is very typical of the way that Florence used to look several hundred years ago. So, um, I don't know, let's use India as an example. When you go to a country like India, you're still going to find on some of the streets all the same merchants on the same street. So you'll find maybe like leather shops on one street. Then you can find your material shops. Then you can find your shops selling musical instruments maybe, or maybe, okay, you, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. You've got these areas that are dedicated to one particular type of work. And the same was true of Florence. This was a city that was making arts and crafts for hundreds of years, <coughs> all right? So whilst they're making stuff for tourists today, as 500 years ago, they were making stuff for the rich families and whoever else, okay? So this was an ongoing thing. Hundreds and hundreds of people were involved in the making of arts and crafts. Let's carry on. This great building over there in the distance is the Uffizi Gallery. That's the finest picture gallery in Italy. Uh, some of you have got some free time later. Um, we may consider having a look inside there. I'll keep you posted. If you walk down this street, the one where we came from, all right, going in this direction get to the Florence 
everything is within a very, very short distance of walking. It only takes you three minutes to walk from here to the cathedral. And you saw that church down there, Santa Croce. So you remember the direction and place of our leather shop if you have a problem. Yeah, it's all in a straight line. Then you turn right to get to the cathedral. And everything that we do is in and around this area. All right, our restaurant is near to here. Our guided tour is starting right from this spot. Hopefully you're picking up the headsets too so you can listen to the guide properly in a minute. Again, very close. Straight around. Yeah. Entrepreneurs will gather, huh? shiny nose because uh, for good luck uh, you have to rub uh, the nose uh, make a wish it is a fountain as you see uh, I mean we don't have much water uh, to spare uh, we don't have the 13 aqueducts the Romans have uh, to make the water jets work uh, so only the water in mouth of a boar uh, makes the fountain in Florence it is like the Trevi fountain of Florence uh, you 71 Florence, Florence was chosen to be the capital the new United Kingdom of Italy. Then 1871, <coughs> the capital shifted down to Rome, huh? conquered by Garibaldi. And, uh, uh, unfortunately, I mean, nothing is left of the old past, except the column huh? that tells you where the center is. You can actually see how far uh, went uh, the Roman uh, town. Whenever you see a building slanting uh, in front of you, that's the end, eh? that's where the walls eh, of Roman Florence were. The end of the square, eh? regular, orthogonal, and eh? uh, uh, six. <sighs> Took 400 years to complete. Carrara, which means faith, green from nearby Prato is hope, and red from Siena, charity, faith, hope, and charity, theological virtue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
from the Jerusalem, and of course she has a square bell tower. Stay with us. Huh? We'll receive the best education. Huh? Okay. Uh, because uh, private tutors uh, to the Medici boys were the famous humanists, uh, okay. the famous philosophers. Huh? Okay. And uh, so he will uh, stay. These were the three crucial years. Uh, the, the time he spent in the Medici household, uh, uh -huh. Michelangelo, uh -huh. were, were fundamental uh, to learn about Plato, uh, about the, the Greek philosophy, yes. and to be trained as a sculptor in the Medici gardens, uh, uh, trained by Bertoldo, who was the curator of the collection of antiques of Lorenzo mm -hmm. and the pupil of Michelangelo, okay. of Donatello. Okay. Donatello's pupil, told right. was his master. By the way, he had the same age of Giovanni de' Medici. Giovanni de' Medici, one of the sons, the youngest uh, son, uh, son of uh, Lorenzo, at 14 he was already cardinal. Uh, he will become pope at 36. Uh, 36, uh, the first Medici pope, uh, Leo, Leo the Tenth. Leo X, as you know, is a very crucial pope. He's the one who has communicated Martin Luther in 1519. Huh? He was a Medici pope. Okay. He oh. spent his last 30 years in Rome. He died in quite a year, 1564. In the same year, in Pisa, Galileo Galilei was born. Huh? Mm -hmm. The universe won't be the same anymore. 1564, in England, someone else was born, huh? meaning the axis of the world has already shifted uh, west because of America. Because now of the west. East, England, France, and uh, we start the Golden Ages. Okay. 1564, the birth Newton. of... Newton? Newton? No. No, who did you say? A big name. Uh, e e what's e in a name? What's e in a name? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Shakespeare, oh. Shakespeare and Galileo uh. born in the year of Michelangelo's death. 
why. <laughs> Random and <laughs> Ew, I saw that drool. Right, Eric! <laughs> I have like water in my mouth. Like, oh, Eric! Eric! Uh, Does God. that control work though? <laughs> we take you guys back with us to Edmonton. Hi, Hi, Hi. Buenas Buenas Hi. Hi. Buenas oh Typical Italian kids. <laughs> Yeah, That's pretty much the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. What part of Canada are you guys from? Edmonton, Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> the snow part. Go this way, please, because uh, uh, she has to buy the tickets for you. Stay close. Uh, All right. You want your body? Thank you, Edmonton. Everybody get down, I can't see you guys. Oh, everybody get down, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't see I can't speak Spanish. Yo no hablo, no hablo español. No hablo español. It's okay, you understand English. Ragazzi, por favor. Hey, guys. Guys. Please stop. Okay. So, first of all, I have to tell you, just in case somebody gets lost, your final meeting to leave this square. So, your Tourette's group, Anna told me to tell you, six, pay attention, 620, 620, by the gate. So, by the main arch where you met me before. Okay? So this means that sightseeing will last more or less uh, uh, 45 or 40 minutes and I'm going to try to give you at least uh, 25 minutes of an hour free time, okay? Well, but now let me tell you everything about the most famous monument we have in this uh, square, the Leaning Tower, the third monument which was the because the first one was obviously the most important one, so not the tower but the cathedral, the church, 1063, after the church of the Baptist in 1153, and then the tower in 1173. What is the tower? Well, the tower is only the bell tower of the cathedral. Oh. Uh, for that reason, at the top there are bells, seven bells. Each bell is a note of the musical scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, so. In the past, those bells used to sing every morning to call people into the church for services. Now they can ring only sometimes because they say that vibrations are too dangerous for the stability of our tower. So only on Sunday morning. First of all, this is the largest baptistry that you can find in Italy, in the world, we can say. Um, but what was the baptistry used for? Only to baptize people, only for baptizing people. Today is different. Why I asked you that? Because today is different. I mean, today we used to find baptismal phones away in churches. In the Middle Ages, that was impossible because people couldn't enter churches without being baptized. For that reason, we have two separated monuments, the church 
and out of the church of the baptistry. So this is so large a building, actually only for that, for the baptismal font. A very large one too, because in Middle Ages, baptisms were by immersion. I mean, people had to enter there three times in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and after that they were allowed to the church. What do you do? Inside there is a large basin for adults, four smaller basins for children at the corners. Obviously, this font was filled. Are you doing? <laughs> Obviously, that font was filled with water. You say holy water, holy. but in Middle Ages, holy pure water was the rain. Well, can you remember what I told you? Oh, the Latin, the arches of the nave, I mean this row and that row of arches, round-headed, Romanesque. If you look in the aisles, look, we are going to find pointed arches, not Gothic. Uh, as not Gothic as the arches of the baptistry, but uh, Arabic ones like this. Okay, this is the Venus. Yes, perfect. You've been to Cordoba, for example, for the pillars. Marvelous. White and um, white and black stripes, the Moorish influence. Look also at the galleries up there. Those are the matronei. Matrona means woman, matronei women's galleries. So we suppose that in the Middle Ages women probably went upstairs and men stayed downstairs, separated as in the synagogues. Hmm? Before I told you the direction of the church was the east and towards the east we find, I'm sorry, towards the east we find Jesus in a Byzantine mosaic, a mosaic of the 14th century Byzantine, so this means Jesus uh, portrayed like a king. Mm? He is sitting on a throne like a king, showing us the three fingers, probably the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In the other hand, he holds a book with an inscription in Latin, Ego sum lux mundi, I am the light of the world. Jesus is between Mary on the left and Saint John the Evangelist on the right. Then symmetry, lack of movement, golden background, this is the Byzantine style. Anyway, the most famous thing we have in this church is the chandelier just in front of the mosaic, that big lamp, the lightened one made of bronze. Well, that is a so-called Galileo Galilei lamp. I told before that Galileo was baptized into our baptistry, well, because he was born here in Pisa. And at the age of 19, Galileo was in this church during the mass, during a service. 
what happened? Well, probably two doors, self-completely to Christianity. He went to the Holy Land, offering all his goods to poor people. When he came back to Pisa seven years later, he entered a monastery where he began performing miracles and where he died on June the 17th in 1161. Well, since 1161, his body, his skeleton is still inside. Of nail, it's still intact, huh? it's still intact <coughs> into that coffin. So that is the real body of Ranieri. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. But later. Now I want to go there. Then I said I want to show you the masterpiece of the church, which is also one of the masterpieces of the Gothic art. Can you remember what is this? <laughs> yes, good. The pulpit sculptured by whom? By. Nicola San Giovanni Pisano, Giovanni Pisano, 1302, 1310, so sculptured 50 years later. Mm. In the upper part, here too, the old New Testament. This time, the upper part is a monolithic piece. I mean, only one piece of marble, only one rock, in which Giovanni uh, sculptured the old New Testament with a great movement and dramaticity. Only in that stone there are more than 350 figures. Hammer and chisel, remember. Mm -hmm. Please come close. Evil God and the devil. This could be the symbology of the lion. Mm -hmm. The two tallest pillars over here are not the original ones. Because a fire at the end of the 16th century damaged this pool. So after the fire, this monument was completely <coughs> dismantled. Okay, I'll put it on the gag. No, no, put it on the gag. Sandeep Okay, ooh, oh, I know. <laughs> ooh, la la. Jaggy, <laughs> other. Other Jaggy.